Hello and welcome to France Runner Motorsport. Canada is a big country with a proud history in racing, so let's take a look at the 10 best Canadians to race in Formula 1. Surprisingly for a country as large as Canada, they've only had 15 drivers over the years, so there must be 5 who don't make the list. Those 5 are Ernie DeVos, who didn't get on the track, Jacques Villeneuve's uncle, Jacques Villeneuve, who failed to qualify in 3 attempts, Epi Weitzes, who was actually Dutch and failed to finish either of his two Grand Prix seven years apart. John Courts, who retired from his one appearance. And Al Pease, who raced a Castrol Oil Eagle and finished 43 laps down in 1967. Didn't start the race in 1968 and was disqualified for being too slow in 1969. That's how low the bar is set. So with that, remember to subscribe. We are in touching distance of 500 now, so hit that button and let's begin. Welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Number 10, Bill Brack. Like a lot of names on this list, Bill Brack had some success in Canada, but not in international motorsport. He only got three drives in Formula 1, all of which were in Canada. He raced the third Lotus at the Circuit Mont Tremblant in 1968, but qualified last but won and retired with a half-shaft issue. In 1969, he raced for BRM at Mosport and was technically 8th, but wasn't classified for finishing 10 laps down. He returned one final time with BRM in 1972, but spun off and didn't finish. Outside of Formula 1, he would win the Canadian Formula Atlantic Championship in 1974 and 1975, before retiring from motorsport. Number 9, Peter Broker. The second Canadian to race in Formula 1, and the first to race in a Canadian-built car. A car Peter Broker built. The German-born Canadian owned and ran the Stebro Car Company, and entered the 1963 United States Grand Prix. He qualified 21st of 21, and some 15 seconds behind pole man Graham Hill. He survived the race to finish 7th, just outside the points, but a massive 22 laps down. This would be the only time a Stebro car raced in Formula 1, and Peter Broker would continue in national championships into the 70s before passing away in 1980. Number 8, John Cannon. One of the best names in Formula 1 history, sadly John Cannon failed to blow the competition away. He qualified 26th for BRM in 1971 at the American Grand Prix. He was another survivor and just three laps behind the leader, which is almost impressive. He was a Canadian Formula 5000 champion in 1970 and raced and even won races in the Australian Rothman series before retiring in 1978. And he died at the age of 66 whilst testing an experimental aircraft which is a badass way to go. He was born in Britain but was mostly Canadian, so fits in nicely at 8th place on this list. Number 7, Peter Ryan. An American born, seriously are any of these Canadians born in Canada? American born Peter Ryan was a starlet in motorsport circles who was gone long before he was due. He was also the first Canadian to race in Formula 1. At the age of 21 he won a sports car race at Mosport, beating both Pedro Rodriguez and Sterling Moss which is pretty significant, put that straight on your CV. He had a single race in Formula 1 for Lotus in 1961. He managed to qualify 13th and finished the race 9th. He raced at Le Mans in 1962 in a North American racing team Ferrari, but crashed out and just as his career seemed to be on the up, he was killed in a crash at Rems in an International Juniors Cup race. Of all the drivers on this list, Peter Ryan to me looks to have had the brightest future in front of him. It was a huge loss that he was killed at just 22 years of age. Number 6, Alan Berg. Finally someone born in Canada and raced in more than a few races. Alan Berg won the Formula Pacific Championship in 1982 before racing in British Formula 3 in 1983 against the likes of Ayrton Senna and Martin Brundle. In 1984 he'd finished runner-up in the series behind Johnny Dumfries. He'd miss out in 1985 before buying a drive of Osella in Formula 1 in the second half of the 1986 season, replacing Christian Danner who had moved on up to Arrows. The underpowered Alfa Romeo engine and serious reliability issues meant that Alan Berg was never competitive in Formula 1. In fact, he qualified last at practically every round he entered, 
which was just nine races. His best finish was 12th in Germany, four laps down, but honestly, it wasn't Berg's fault. The Acela was just terrible. After Formula 1, Alan Berg raced at Le Mans in a Porsche and even had a go at DTM in a BMW M3 in 1991, but after this, his career went off a cliff and he ended up in Mexico racing in their National Formula 3 Championship. Number 5, George Eaton. Part of the famous Eaton's retail store family, George Eaton used what I'm sure was his huge stacks of money to enter motorsport. He did manage to finish 5th in the Can-Am series in 1969 and got a Formula 1 drive with BRM. It was just a couple of races in America and Mexico in which Eaton qualified last and didn't finish either race. Nevertheless, he returned for BRM in 1970 and competed in the majority of the races that year. He failed to qualify in Spain and at Monaco. Afterwards though, he began qualifying a lot better and was even not last on occasion. His best race was the Canadian Grand Prix of 1970, where he qualified 9th and finished 10th. He returned again for the Canadian Grand Prix in 1971, still with BRM but only finished 15th. And by the end of 1972, his career was as done as the Eaton's retail brand. They don't exist anymore. Number 4, Nicholas Latifi. I think it says a lot that Latifi is this high up on the list, despite only spending two seasons with a backmarker Williams team. He got a bad rap after 2020 being utterly destroyed by teammate George Russell, who was treated as the second coming of Lewis Hamilton. Most people seem to miss that whilst Latifi wasn't out and out quick, he finished well and did his job in a poor car. In 2021 he has come on leaps and bounds, scoring points in Hungary and the laughable Belgium Grand Prix. He finishes most races but still tends to finish behind George Russell. Latifi is set to continue with Williams in 2022 and it'll be interesting to see if the team and Latifi continue to improve. Number 3 Lance Stroll I have been pretty harsh about Lance Stroll in the past, mostly because of the daddy's money issues, but he has done pretty good in the last couple of years, even moving away from the pay driver image he'd been lumbered with in his first few years. That being said, he's not great. He's never broken into the top 10 in the standings. Other than three podiums, there isn't really any great drives that come to mind. He is, however, the second highest Canadian in terms of race starts, and honestly, his rookie year was pretty good with Williams, and 2020 would have been amazing if it wasn't for a bad run of results mid-season. 2021 with Aston Martin has been a step backwards for Stroll, and I do think he may have peaked, especially as he will be going into his sixth Formula 1 season in 2022, and I don't think results will be any better. Number 2, Jacques Villeneuve. Getting into the big cheeses now, and Canada's only Formula 1 world champion is number 2 on the list. Why, you ask? Well, because if you remove his first two years with Williams, then the rest of Jack Villeneuve's time in Formula 1 was a giant steaming pile of nothingness. Outside those first two seasons, there were no wins, just four podiums, a best seventh in the championship twice. Without those first two Williams years, his career is on par with someone like Romain Grosjean. Those first two years were impressive, taking pole on his debut, winning his fourth Formula 1 race at the Nürburgring, not to mention beating Michael Schumacher to the 1997 title. Williams lost the advantage in 1998 and Villeneuve had a mediocre year, but nothing can be worse than joining an ambitious new team and not having it meet the high expectations set when signing a former champion. But 1999 with BAR was a disaster. No points, 12 retirements out of 16 races. Jacques Villeneuve would have been better off staying at home and trying to rid the world of crisps, one pack at a time. BAR improved over the next few years, but Jacques was dumped in 2003 and struggled with Renault when he stepped in to replace Jarno Trulli at the end of 2004. He joined Sauber for his last couple of years but was unimpressive and replaced by Robert Kubitzer. He'd done various things since but has never lived up to that 1997 Formula 1 championship. I'm not going to say he's bad, he was the 1995 Kart Series champion and Indy 500 winner and is one of the best drivers Canada has ever produced. But since 1997 he has only won one race in the Le Mans series at Spa in 2008 for Peugeot. It's enough that Canada's only champion doesn't make it to the top of the list. Number 1 Gilles Villeneuve I would swear on my mother's life that if Gilles Villeneuve hadn't been killed in a crash at Zolder in 1982, he would have been champion at some point. In his brief 8 years in motorsport, Gilles Villeneuve won the 1976 and 1977 CASC Formula Atlantic series and the 1976 IMSA Formula Atlantic Series before moving into Formula 1. He made his debut in 1977 with McLaren before spending the rest of his career with Ferrari. 
It would only have four full years and seven races either side of those, but would take six wins and was runner-up to Jody Schechter in 1979. He was a highly talented driver. His duel with René Arnoux at Dijon in 1979 is one of the greatest moments in motorsport history, and if not for his death, 1982 could have been his year. He had a brother who also entered Formula 1, and his son was world champion, but Gilles Villeneuve is the greatest of all the Villeneuves, and the greatest Canadian in Formula 1. So there you have the top 10 Canadians to have raced in Formula 1. Do you think Lance Stroll and Nicolas Latifi can get higher on the list, or is there another Canadian who can come in and take the list by storm? It's kind of amazing that Canada only has one championship and just 17 wins split between the two Villeneuves. I could make a joke about Canadians being so polite they just let people through, but looking at this list, it might actually be true. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, leave a like and a share. Thank you for watching and have a good one.